Hi folks, if you're watching this, you're probably interested in moving a toilet over in a concrete foundation like this one. Very easy to do, it's very common and it's very inexpensive. You don't need to pay thousands of dollars to have that done. You can do it yourself. Uh, basically what you do is you want to measure where your new opening is going to be. Um, in most cases it's 12 inches from the wall and it's 18 inches from any obstacle on either side. Uh, such as a tub or a vanity. Um, know where your opening is going to be exactly and then you rent a jackhammer. You break open your, your opening. It's going to be very dusty so you're going to wear protection. Put up plastic uh, sheeting to keep the dust from getting into the rest of the house. Break all that up. Take it out. That'll take you about an hour in most cases. You can rent jackhammers at uh, your home improvement stores <clears throat> or rental places. Once you get all that out, then you, you dig down into the dirt, you access your existing PVC pipe, you cut that pipe. If you have a sawzall, that makes it easy. If you don't, a regular saw works just fine. Cut that out, and then you'll have an assortment of PVC fittings like this. Um, there's different sizes and different adapters, 3-inch, 4-inch. Look through those. You'll probably need a couple of short pieces of either 3 inch or 4 inch, maybe both pieces of pipe. But put together your new strategy to bring that to the opening where you need it. <clears throat> and then you dry fit it all together. Put it in place. Use a level like this to make sure that when it comes up level with the, your new opening with the concrete, that it's, it's very, very close to level, if not perfectly level. Otherwise... You're going to have a crooked flange and that's going to cause problems with your toilet ceiling. So make it level. Once you have it dry fit, then you glue all the pieces together, which is just standard plumbing. And then you backfill it with dirt and gravel and then a moisture barrier, which is just a piece of plastic. And then uh, a couple of bags of concrete that you mix up and pour those in and then level it off and let it dry and you're finished. It really is that simple. I'm going to show you how to do all of those steps of this video. So uh, watch it and leave comments at the bottom if you want to and uh, let's show you how we did it. Okay, so we have taken a jackhammer, rented it from Home Depot, and broke up an opening here. It's a little slow going at first, but a little easier <clears throat> once you get some of it broken up. Took less than an hour, lots of dust. I had plastic um, hung up on all of these walls, including the door to contain all of that dust. Uh, so that's all done and cleaned up. And so now we are digging. One thing I did run into, you can see it here, there's a rebar steel reinforcement in there. Um, that's actually not in the way, fortunately, so we got lucky on that. If it were in the way, I would just cut it here and bend it out of the way, or cut it here and here and just completely remove it. But uh, not a problem. So next thing to do is to just keep digging. Need to go about 10 more inches down where I can access my cut point and that's what we'll do.
Now that we've got all the dirt out of the way, cleared the pipe, uh, we're ready to cut it and rebuild it back up the way we want it. And so I'm going to use a couple of tools here, Sawzall. Bad news, folks. So this uh, riser here was not put in perfectly straight by the plumber when they roughed out the plumbing and before they poured the concrete. So, you know, this is aligned with the pipe. And if you look at the bubble here, I have to move it all the way over to here would be level. And even after only 10 inches, it's got about a one inch gap. So that's a significant angle. So uh, we can't really do what we were gonna do because that problem is just gonna echo itself all the way to the flange. And we're gonna have a crooked toilet mate problem there. So <clears throat> That's no good. We don't want a leaking toilet after all this much trouble. So what I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to dig down even more to this next elbow, cut that off, put in another 45, and rebuild it back up. So just me in the dirt right now and a little bit more work, but that's the right thing to do here. Now we're going to cut it with our Sawzall, using a different blade on this one that's a little less aggressive because I don't want to risk cracking that pipe and making the problem worse. That happens. Now we have a good place to start over. So next thing I'll do is take some sandpaper and clean up that joint real good so that our glue will stick. So I've put my fittings together, dry fitting, and spent a lot of time fiddling with it and twisting it to get it to line up exactly where I want it and making sure it's level. Level that way, level that way. Make sure I'm still 12 inches out from the wall, which I am, that's perfect. And then 18 inches from the tub, which is also where we need to be. So now I'm gonna mark these alignments here so that when I glue them they'll all go back in the same place they are now. One more here. That one's going to be tricky. I'll 
another one here. Pardon me if my big head is in the way. Okay, so now everything is marked. And I'm gonna glue this whole thing together in one piece so I can put it all on in one piece. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna put together our Loch Ness monster thing here. I'm gonna start by making sure we get good primer on here. Some people only prime one surface. I don't know why they only do that. I always do both. I prime both surfaces, but most of the time I only glue one. As long as you twist it in, you should be okay there. Sorry, I'm probably not putting that where you can see it so good. make sure I have these oriented right so that's going to go like that and then this one I had two marks so it's going to go like this good coat of glue Make sure we line it up, hold it together. This other one's going to go like this. Always want to end with a twist. And there is our famous Loch Ness monster that we can put in in one piece. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to prime the drain pipe down here. And by the way, I forgot to mention, I took a piece of sandpaper and smoothed off the inside edge of that pipe because if you have any little burrs or cuts sticking out, if you've got women in the house, sometimes they flush feminine products or you never know what somebody's gonna flush down a toilet. <clears throat> and if it hangs on anything sticking out like that, it'll cause a a clog, so make sure all those are smooth. Wet wipes. We found clogs from wet wipes.
for the cement. Twist it back into the same place. Quick level check. Make sure everything is the same. All that looks good. Okay, so we'll let that dry and then the next step is to fill all this back up with gravel, dirt, and concrete. Importantly, I put some gravel down underneath this bottom joint because you want that thing to have some stability and structure underneath it in case some unexpected weight pushes down on this pipe. You don't want that breaking. So I'm basically putting this down underneath here and kind of shoving it in there to make sure it's seated in there pretty good. And then... We're going to take the same dirt that I took out and we're going to backfill all of this. I don't see the need to completely fill this hole <clears throat> with gravel, so I'm not. It didn't have gravel in it before. But what I will do is when I get towards the top here, <clears throat> I am going to put a layer of gravel and I am going to put a barrier, plastic barrier for moisture and then of course on top of that will be concrete. <clears throat> Take a 2 by 4 here and I'm just going to kind of gently push this down in here because so I want to compact it but I don't want to hit it so hard I'm going to break anything. Or I'm going to put a little more gravel on that, probably not much, 
uh, vapor barrier, moisture barrier. But before I do that, I need to bring this up level with where I want it with the floor. So I'm going to do just a little bit more plumbing here around that, which I'll just be building a little riser that comes up to where I want it. I want this coupler to be level. So I'm going to make a couple of marks here. We've got all our gravel in now, so just packing this down a little bit. I'm not hitting this very hard. I'm just wanting to remove any little loose pockets. So when we pour our cement on top of this, it doesn't shift around on us. And before we do that, I gotta put a little vapor barrier down, just a piece of plastic. Do that now. Got our piece cut. Actually going to put a little bit of glue on both sides in this case. This is actually a no-stop coupler, which means it doesn't have a, a ridge in the middle. Um, they're good for when you, you don't know exactly where your pipes are going to mate. or you, They're actually designed so that when you have to, you want them to slip up and down. But I like it in this case because I can be pretty exact about the where I want it to show up. So, I'm pulling this up level here so that when it sets and dries, It'll be perfectly level with the surface of the concrete. And there we go. So now we have our, our hub. So when we pour concrete in there, you know, this will be level across here. And then we'll be able to push our flange in. I already measured it. There's going to be a little bit of gap here between the top of this and where this flange goes down. And that is the thickness of the board that I'm putting down. So you have to know what kind of flooring you're putting down to know what kind of flange you're going to use. You don't want to put the flange in 
or make any assumptions too soon, but I do know the type of flooring I'm putting in. Got our vapor barrier in. I'm just hitting this with a little bit of water, just water only. Um, wetting this edge down a little bit. They're usually dusty after all the work we did. And this helps keep that from preventing the new concrete mix from bonding to it. So you don't have to get it super soaked, but a little bit helps. Got our concrete mixed up. I only have a small area, so I'm mixing this outside in a wheelbarrow. Otherwise, I would do it in here with a mixer. Forgot to film that last part there, but basically uh, you just take a board and easy rake it across the top so that it gets everything nice and level. Uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the way this went. It's uh, The flange is in exactly the right spot and it's square and flush, so there won't be any problem putting the toilet on it. I'm super, super glad that I went ahead and went down to that second elbow and fixed all that, it was definitely worth the trouble. I would not have wanted to have been trying to compensate for that awkward angle, so well worth it.